in it. Okay, so we're going to talk about how we identify different rock types, and I've got, I'm going to show you some examples of each type, and um, we're going to go through some general rules for each rock type and how to identify them. So first we have metamorphic rocks, igneous rocks, and sedimentary rocks. Okay, and so this will be good practice for tomorrow um, when you have your formative assessment. Again, you've got the nine rocks that are over there, so I recommend that you look at those rocks, you can take pictures of them, um, you can work with your team to f try and figure out what they are, create flashcards, and study those tonight so that you can do well on that formative assessment tomorrow. Um, I'd also recommend some notes and stuff today. So we're going to start with um, igneous rocks. And I've got igneous rocks up here. So those of you, in case you haven't attended the conferences, igneous rocks are from, formed from either magma or lava. Okay? So it's when magma or lava cools down. Who can remind us what the difference is between magma and lava? Lisa. Isn't lava when it's um, on the Earth's surface and magma is when it's still inside the volcano? Perfect. So lava is above ground, magma is below ground. Okay, which one do you think would cool faster, um, lava or magma? Lava. Good. So it's out on, in the air, um, it cools much quicker. And that's the, the major thing that helps us to identify uh, igneous rocks and differences between igneous rocks. Okay, um, so when magma or lava cools, we get crystal sizes, okay? Um, and crystals take time to grow, so rocks that cool slowly are able to grow larger crystals, okay? Rocks that cool quickly are, can't grow large crystals and they're more small ones, okay? Um, so with that information about crystal sizes, what would you expect to have larger crystals, magma or lava? Magma. Magma, good. So rocks that cool beneath the Earth's surface have larger crystals. Okay, and we can see crystals. We call them large crystals if we can see them or differentiate them with our eyes. So we're going to look up here at a couple um, igneous rocks and we'll talk about um, ways that we can identify them. So what we're looking for is either large or small crystals. And we're also looking for um, some of these rocks, a lot of these rocks have holes in them. Um, and now those represent air bubbles in the lava usually. Sometimes you can have some bubbles in magma, but usually that represents a rock that's cooled on the surface. Um, and then we have a few very special types of lava or magma or igneous rocks that we can just remember and identify. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some of these. Um, we're going to start with this one. This is uh, Aha. Uh, so we can see this in, this is actually a picture from Hawaii, and we can see the jagged edges of this lava as it cools. Okay, so we can see those egg edges and it would have lots of holes in it. So we're going to look at some closer up pictures of rock. Let's choose, um, let's see, scoria. Okay, so this is a rock called scoria, and this is what I mean by being able to see rock holes or things in igneous rocks. So we can see all of the holes that are here, um, and it can be bumpy and scratchy. Scoria is a rock that you commonly find in like people's gardens or next to walkways or whatever, or driveways. It's that red to dark brown rock that's all uh, pretty light, but scratchy and, and um, what you would call lava rock. It's like the rock you could go across the sidewalk with and really Colors it red, yep. Okay, um, so that's an example of an igneous rock. Um, we can look at a few more. Let's do basalt. This is a very common igneous or igneous rock. Um, as it says, it makes up most of the world's oceanic crust. And we can see again some of these holes, some of these bumps that would be formed in lava as it cools quickly. Okay, air bubbles. Um, usually, these rocks are dark colored or red. Um, and that's another thing we can use to identify igneous rocks. So we're going to look at some of the special types of igneous rocks, ones that kind of stand out. Um, we're going to look for obsidian. This is a rock, um, this is a fast cooling igneous rock. It doesn't have any crystals in it, and it's the one that looks glassy, like arrowheads um, or sometimes jewelry. It's very black. Very glassy. We know that that's one of our special types of igneous rocks. 
<clears throat> Another example of a special type of igneous rock um, is pumice. Um, and it's got very, very small holes. It's usually very light. Pumice will usually float in water. It's usually less dense than water. So it's very light. It feels kind of, um, it feels pretty brittle. Like if you dropped it, it would break in half very easily. Um, that's pumice and that's an igneous rock. Another very, very common igneous rock that kind of represents a different example of the ones we've been looking at is granite. Um, and so you know we have granite countertops and, and everything like that. Um, so this is an example of an igneous rock where we have large crystals that have formed. And we can see the different um, crystals that have grown in there. So each of the different colors represents different minerals that have grown in these crystal sizes. Okay, so this is again granite, it's cooled very slowly, that's why we can see the visual differentiation between the rocks. Okay, so again some reminders um, for igneous rocks is we're looking for grain sizes. I'm going to show you one more that represents a small grain size. Okay, so here's a, a little bit smaller grain size, and again, we can start to see some common things that we would notice. Um, where we see crystals, let's see if we can find one with an even smaller <coughs> grain size. That's not the best picture. Okay, so this one has a little bit smaller um, crystals in it, um, but we can still kind of differentiate. And as the crystal sizes get smaller and smaller, um, that becomes more and more difficult. So we saw granite that has big ones, um, and we see this one that's got smaller ones. So we can imagine that they would look as they get even smaller. Okay, um, so we're going to move on to the other type of rocks. Um, we're, the next one we're going to look at is sedimentary rocks. Okay, so sedimentary rocks. Um, if, in case you weren't in the conference uh, yesterday, have are made up of smaller pieces of other rocks. Okay, and so we can look for grain sizes in these. So we can look for rocks that appear or feel like they are made up of little chunks of other rocks. And so we look for these clasts, C L A S T S, clasts or sediments. Okay, so we break up rocks and into small pieces, and then we can form them together and to make sedimentary rock. Another thing we can look for is um, uniform layers. Okay, so they're called strata. Different layers of rock are called strata. Um, S T R A T A. Um, a lot of the hills that we have out here, we can see those lines. You're driving to Warland. Those cliffs that you cross pass right on your way out of Thermopolis, you can definitely see the strata in those lines. Okay, so strata, we can see a lot of those around here as we're first going into the canyon. Those red rocks where you can see all of the lines on them. The first part of it, right before you go the down the hill. Cliffs. Yeah, the red cliffs right before you go down the hill. Those are sedimentary and they have the strata in there, the lines. Okay? Um, so we're going to look at a few of these. Um, let's start with this one. This one's a conglomerate um, and that's where we have a lot of different pieces of rocks together. So these are ones where we can actually see chunks of rocks. We can see pebbles all stuck together inside of this material. Kind of looks like, you ever seen fruitcake? No. Where it's got the, if you cut fruitcake, it's got all the chunks of stuff in it. Kind of like that. Okay? Um, so that's called a conglomerate and it's a sedimentary rock. Another common example, um, we have a lot of it around here, is uh, sandstone. Um, this works. So we're going to look for sandstone. Um, and if you were to feel this rock, and I have an example of it across the room if you want to look at it more closely, um, you would be able to feel the little sand grains. Some of them might come off or rub off and you'd be able to feel that. Okay, so again, sedimentary rocks are made up of small pieces of other rocks. So if we can identify those, um, it can be very helpful. They look different than crystals. They look like little tiny grains of sand or pebbles or whatever, um, where crystals are hard and they're part of the actual rock. 
Um, another one that we can have is uh, coquina. This is a, a type of rock that's actually composed mostly of shell fragments. Um, so, like little pieces of shells from other animals. So one thing we can have from sedimentary rock is biological sedimentary rocks. These are rocks that are actually made of biological material, of stuff that comes from plants and animals. Another example is coal. Coal is an example of something um, that's formed from dead plant material or um, and that's been buried for years and years. We have a lot of coal in Wyoming. Um, you guys are probably familiar with what it is. It's black um, and can rub off and be kind of dusty. And that's an example of a, a sedimentary rock that we have a lot of here in Wyoming. A few other sedimentary rocks. A common one is shale. Uh, this is when we take mud or clay and form it into um, a rock. And again, if we rub this we might, or scrape it, we might have pieces fall off pretty easily. Um, so it's very, very fine grain. Um, it's not going to be like sandstone where we can see the individual pieces very well, but it will have that, you know, as you rub it, it will be dusty and, and your fingers will come off on it. It also breaks off in layers very easily. And we have quite a bit of shale around here. Um, let's see if we can find a couple other ones. That are worth looking at. No, it's not that. That's one for us. Let's look at siltstone. Again, this one's a lot. Uh, it's got a very fine grain texture, but in this one we can kind of see some of the layers that we're talking about. Okay, um, and again, I have lots of examples of these rocks, so if you want to come see them firsthand um, and be able to feel them, you can do that. And you also have the nine rocks to perform an assessment that you can do that way. Alright, so we're going to go on to metamorphic rocks. This is our last major type of, of rocks. Um, and metamorphic rocks are, again, rocks that form from other types of rocks. So we take either sedimentary, an igneous, or even a metamorphic rock, we apply heat and pressure, and we can turn it into a different type of rock. We rearrange the crystals, um, and sometimes we can form uh, new minerals or combined minerals arrangements so that it looks a little bit different. So one thing, a few things we're going to look for for a metamorphic rock First off is foliation. Foliation, anybody remind us what foliation is? That attended the Metamorphic Rock Conference. Okay, foliation is where we have lines in rocks. Okay, so we, um, the example we used in the um, conference is if you're walking through a room that's crowded and everybody's trying to go one way, um, it's very hard to go the opposite direction. You kind of get pushed the same way. So when rocks get heated um, and have a lot of pressure to become metamorphic rocks, the minerals might start out all different directions, just like people in a room. Okay? Um, but as more heat and pressure gets in there, those minerals will all be lined up. Okay? Just like as you're trying to walk through a large crowd, you kind of have to go the same direction as everybody else. Um, so you get those minerals will get lined up and they often have bands in them. Um, one other thing we often see is glitter, mica glitter. Um, so different from crystals and igneous rocks because it reflects light usually better. Okay, mica glitter, and we'll look at an example of that. Um, we can often have deformation. So if you have rock layers that are curved or things like that, that's a, an indication of metamorphic rocks. And we can kind of look for flattened crystals or flattened layers um, from sedimentary or metamorphic rocks. If we have rocks or crystals that look like they've been flattened or stretched, that's a good indication of metamorphic rocks as well. So we're going to look at a couple of these. Um, here's a good example of our foliation. This rock is called Nice, um, and we can see that those crystals have all been flattened and formed um, into layers like this. We can also have some, some nice examples that have many, many more layers than this one does. Okay, so we can see those black bands. We can have lots and lots of black bands stacked on each other, top of each other. Okay, um, so we can look for that type of banding. 
see if I can find one that's got some mica glitter in it for us. a little bit, but not as much as we want. Alright, so see how this kind of glitters? Um, we've got little chunks of these minerals of mica, um, and they're like little flat layers, kind of like the scales of a fish inside of the rock. And as we tilt it in the light, we can see reflection off of those little flat layers in there. Okay, so that's a rock called schist, um, and it has those mica uh, little minerals and layers in it. Let's see if we can find so one of the most uh, or most commonly known metamorphic rocks is marble. So you might have marble countertops or marble tiles. Um, and again, marble has a little bit of that mica glitter to it where we've got scale type looking things in it where we can see different layers that are in there. Um, and marble can be you know, similar, all continuous color, or it can have lines through it, just to get an indication of that foliation, that heat pressure that it's under. We'll look at a couple more igneous rocks, I mean, excuse me, metamorphic rocks. One that's important is slate. So we looked at shale on sedimentary rocks. Um, and shale was the one that was kind of flat, made of mud or silt that goes into flat layers. Well, if we take that shale and put it under more heat and pressure, um, we get slate, which is a metamorphic rock. Okay, so it's much harder than the shale was, and it's, but it will still break off in those layers. Again, as shown here, we can get lots of different colors. We have some slate around here as well, um, and we can see that it, it will just chip off, and we can actually see layers um, inside this rock. Uh, so that's a, another common example of metamorphic rocks. Um, is there any questions about how we can identify the different types of rocks? Okay, so again, my recommendation, um, study tables or whenever you need to, spend some time with those nine rocks. It would be helpful to make flashcards, share them with your team members. Again, that will be tomorrow that you'll be identifying those rocks. So one thing that I would also do is on your rock types note pages is there is a URL for each type of rock that helps you identify and practice identifying each type of rock. Okay? So spend some time on those things and we'll see you later.